Hi, YouTube family. Auntie is here. It's not cute not knowing. I'm Patty Jackson. I'm your auntie of pop culture. Let's start with a hug. We are getting a whole lot of rain on, on, on the East Coast, and I got like a ton of stuff to do this afternoon. But let's start by remembering the godfather of black cinema. Melvin Van Peoples passed away this week at the age of 89. They called him the groundbreaking filmmaker, and he was. He was a playwright, a musician. They say he ushered in the black exploitation era because it was 50 years ago, 1971. He released this movie, Sweet Sweet Badass Song. No one had ever seen a movie like it. He did it himself. It was independent. Nobody, you know, no major studios would back him. They said, what kind of movie is this? They rated the movie X. Now, this is what I didn't know. I did not know this movie was rated X, but it was. It He he got through his various things that he was doing. He raised the $500,000 to make it. It went on to make $14 million. Melvin Van Peoples had quite a career. He wrote Grease Lightly. Remember, Richard Pryor starred as Wendell Scott, um, the African-American race car driver. He ushered in a new era, and he was heavily criticized. He directed this movie called The Watermelon Man, and I remember my dad talking about this. Godfrey Cambridge, it was a movie about a white bigot who wakes up and he's a black man. It's like one of those, one of those classics. But... He ushered in an era where there was the movie and then there was the soundtrack. When you think of the likes of Isaac Hayes, Shaft, Marvin Gaye's Trouble Man, Curtis Mayfield, and Superfly, he ushered in an era that a lot of people didn't like because they did not like these black exploitation movies, but it ushered in because no one had seen imagery like this. He had a play, Ain't Supposed to Die, A Natural Death, it's coming on Broadway. His son, Mario Van Peoples, New Jack City, is bringing it to life on Broadway with a special dedication to his dad. I love the relationship between father and son. And Ma um, Melvin was groundbreaking indeed. Passed away this week at the age of 89. But his works will linger on. Omari Hardwick and J-Lo, yes. Teaming up for a motion picture entitled The Mother, where Jennifer Lopez plays an assassin and Omari Hardwick, Ghost, is going to play an FBI agent. The Fugees came back together last night. I told you the Fugees have re reunited. Prize, Lauren Hill, Wyclef Jean. Why were they three hours late? Three hours late getting to the stage. Any fans of the Charles? Fuller play, A Soldier Story, it was a play in 81, a movie with Denzel Washington in 1984, and many others. Whew, that movie was just a cast full of greatness. Get ready for the TV adaption, the series of A Soldier Story. David Allen Greer, who's up for seven Tony nominations because Soldier Story, you know, came back to Broadway. Tony Awards are Sunday. David Allen Greer is not only going to star, but he's going to be producing this Soldier's Play TV series. Kevin Hart teaming up with F. Gary Gray. F. Gary Gray brought a set it off. New Netflix movie where Kevin Hart plays an international thief in the motion picture lift. Big ups to Questlove. I spent so much of the summer talking about his documentary, Summer of Soul. He's getting the 2021 Vanguard Award. This is where... Questlove made his directing debut, Summer Soul, on Showtime. So, so good, especially if you if you love music. R. Kelly is refusing to testify in his sex trafficking case. The prosecution, they've arrested several women, um, testified to men. Now the defense, they've got to do their thing, but R. Kelly refuses to testify. Rapper, actor, common, the new project, a beautiful Revolution Part 2 is out, and he sat down with Ellen DeGeneres, and yes, he talked about Tiffany Haddish. They're going strong, and he was telling the story about how he's going to exercise, and Tiffany said something like, well, you watch your legs, especially my favorite one. Comments never that revealing. 
another revealing thing. Earlier, the week was like so crazy for me. Jeannie from The Real, Jeannie Ma for The Real, she's married to Jeezy, she's pregnant. Why did her ex-husband go on social media to refer to her as trash? See, when she was married to him, Jeannie was like, I'm never having kids. I don't want kids. I don't want kids. She divorced the same gets with Jeannie, and she's going to be making babies all day. Go Jeezy. I like Jeezy. Kelly Clarkson has a new song, 2021. Christmas isn't canceled, just you. <laughs> Is this a song for the ex-husband that's trying to take all of her money? Christmas isn't canceled, just you. You talk about petty. It's a new song from Kelly Clarkson. Whoopi Goldberg is going to be around for a minute on The View. She just signed a new four-year deal. Gabrielle Union, got anything stronger, this new book? Or can you cut at me harder than that? It's a new book. And she talked about Dwayne Wade with his break baby, and she was devastated. Gabby says, if that incident happened today, because she's not the same woman as she was back then, she would not stay with Dwayne Wade. Steve Harvey opening up about his daughter, Lori. She's dating Michael B. Jordan. And guess what Steve Harvey said? His daughter has never been happier. Method Man sat down with Jada Pinkett Smith, her mom, and Willow for a Red Table Talk. It's really good. Y'all know I love Clifford. Method Man talked about being 50. He talked about fitness, acting, and being married. See, he's got one of those wives that got to let everybody know, I'm, I'm married, I'm married, I'm married. The Wonder Years. It was so good last night. I really enjoyed that. I really, I just made everything stop to sit there to watch The Wonder Years. Really, really good. Airs on Tuesday, Wednesday nights. What day is this? Thursday, Wednesday nights, 8.30 on ABC. And B.B. King, I kind of saved the best for last because a new biography is coming out about the King of the Blues. B.B. King, King of the Blues, The Rise and Reign. B.B. King died in 2015. He was 89 years old. At the time of his death, they said that B.B. King had 15 kids. The B.B. King estate says this biography, which is coming out next week, is full of lies, full of lies, because he couldn't have had 15 kids because he was sterile. The people at the B.B. King estate, this story gets wilder. They're claiming that B.B. King injured his testicles when he was 12. Then when he got older, he got these STDs, and it made him sterile. B.B. King has claimed all these kids. Where's the DNA? Where is the DNA? This is when you got to get the DNA test and be like, that's my daddy. Remember what happened with James Brown? They were coming out the woodwork. James Brown, my daddy. James Brown, my daddy. Now it's a bunch of foolishness. But the BB King estate sounds to me like somebody don't want to give up no money. Rest in peace, BB King. They out here fighting about these kids. Leave a comment. <laughs> I love hearing from you guys. Thank you so much. Leave a comment. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the shenanigans because there's always, there's always shenanigans and it's not cute not knowing and now you know. I'm Patty Jackson. Thanks for joining me. I'm your auntie of pop culture.